It's time to accelerate. Hi, this is Andy. Welcome to another edition of Frontline Friday with my regular and very special guest, Bridget Gleason. Now, before we get to the show, Bridget and I have a favorite ask of you. We really appreciate it. If you took time right now to leave a review for this show on iTunes, and while you're there, click the button, subscribe to Accelerate, make sure you get Frontline Friday automatically each week. Also, we need to hear from you. More specifically, we need your sales questions. I mean, what can we answer for you? What challenges do you have that we can help you with? So go to accelerate.fm forward slash frontline and enter your question there. Each month, we're going to select one listener's question to be the question of the month. And the winner will receive a $50 Amazon gift card. So remember, go to accelerate.fm forward slash frontline to give us your question and maybe win 50 bucks. So Bridget, how are you today? Andy, you know the answer. I'm doing great. Busy, as I said, as we were getting started, busy, but really good. But great is great. You know, is a step down from fantastic. So I know. You know what? Probably it shouldn't really be a step down. <clears throat> it's just, you know, sometimes there are those days when things just tend to pile up and I'm, I'm having one of those days. Well, this is like a nice break for you then. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, it's a nice break. And then I just go back to the activities. Unfortunately, during the break, nobody does the activities for me that I need to do. That's the bummer. Well, that's Nobody's true. Gonna, yeah. See, but you can do this. I mean, this is, we're recording this late in the day. So, you know, you could actually be sitting there with a you know, glass of scotch and I could hear the ice cubes tinkling in your glass. I mean, that, that you could do that. I could, you know, it's funny. I have a, I'm not a huge drinker anyway, but when I do, it's when I'm done. That's my signal that I'm done working. So I typically don't mix the two. I like it to be when I'm done. You're done. Then I'm done. Yeah. Which is generally a good idea. So uh, unless, you know, you just need a break. That's true. That's true. People do it differently. You know, no, no right way, no wrong way. You know, no judgment on this show. No judgment. Definitely no judgment. So no judgment zone, at least for you. A That's no judgment right. zone. That's right. <laughs> okay. So, so today we're going to talk about how you, how do you, as an individual contributor, as whether you know an SDR, an AE, a field sales rep, you know, frontline sales manager, how do you start taking the steps to assess? Sort of take a moment, step back, assess where you are. Right, who you are, where you are in your career, and consciously think about where you want to go, either at your existing company or you know thinking one or two steps ahead if it means moving to another company to get where you want to go. But but assessing where you are and then saying, okay, what can I do? What do I need to do deliberately to start positioning myself to take that next step? Yeah, it's a really it's a really good topic. I think the first step is that assessment piece. How do you, how does one honestly assess where they are, particularly in light of where they want to go? So, so I guess there's two pieces and maybe some of it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg because you need to assess number where you, where you are, but also it needs to be contextual. Where am I based on what I'm trying to accomplish or where I want to go or what I want to do? Because sometimes the gaps have to do with, you you may be doing perfectly in the job that you're in, but you still may have a gap to get to that next place. So I think you got to kind of know both pieces in order for it to be an effective exercise. Okay. So step one. You're asking me for a formula now? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like it. So, so <clears throat> you're, let's say you're an SDR. Yeah. And yeah, we sort of know SDRs tend to be, or the, the position itself tends to you know, be a relatively short duration. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, we're trying to get people to sort of prove that they have what it takes to, to s- exist in a sales environment, to, you know, succeed to some degree, master the basics, uh, weather the storm, if you will. So I think SDRs probably pretty quickly start thinking about, okay, what's what's next, right? I got 12, 18 months here, and then what's the next step? What do I need to do to sort of get there? And so for a lot of people, I find that it, 
and, I've, and this is sort of unfortunate, but I find that the, a lot of times SDRs don't really feel comfortable saying, hey, I need to go to my manager and have that conversation because they'll think, hey, you're so new. Why are you thinking about that? Just focus on what you're supposed to be doing right today. So is there is there a question in that? Well, it's just... Or more just a comment? More just a comment, I guess. But it's, I think that, that one of the things that I'm finding in, in work with a lot of teams is that sort of the millennials have a little bit of harder time seeking out people to be mentors. And I think that's mm. sort of one of the things that, that's really, not necessarily your, your frontline manager, but people to help you sort of understand what's coming and what you can do to put yourself in position to, to sort of take advantage of it. Yeah, I think it's, it's really helpful to have a mentor for sure. And in some cases, I think it's probably good if it's not your manager. You know, you want your manager to have your back. So I would, I would look for guidance from my manager, but I think it's also great to have that mentor and somebody with a different perspective. And then the question is, as you point out, okay, do I feel comfortable going and asking and, and where do I go look to get a mentor and what should I look for in a mentor? Well, and I think, you know, part of the process, the same process used to prospect for customers, right? I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have a little bit of a, a situation where you're going to ask somebody for some of their time and they may be busy doing other things and you sort of have to have a little bit of a, a pitch, a little bit of a value proposition. You're going to lay on them to say, look, why is it worth their time to spend, spend it talking to you? And Andy, what would somebody coming to you and asking you to be their mentor, what would, what, what would, or could they say, what would be part of that pitch that would get you to say yes? No, it's a great question. Great question. Um, it's usually, to me, it, it's, it's usually with the people that I've ended up mentoring. It's, it's been a little more indirect, and I think they've sort of, um, the savvy ones, I don't think all have done that deliberately, but some come in and basically lead with questions. Right? Yeah, hey, could you get a second to answer this question? I've been, you know, thinking about this particular topic and I just haven't been able to work it through myself. I wanted to get another perspective on it. And work on building that that sort of relationship first. And I think one of the hard things that oftentimes people said, yeah, get a mentor, and they sort of try to end game it too soon, similar as they do with a similarly perhaps to a, a potential buyer, right? You know, assume familiarity before it's uh, they've earned the trust or earned the right to, uh, you know, ask the next level of question. So, uh, I think if you approach it as sort of a, you know, as you would with a prospect, you've got some good questions you're going to ask. You then start building the relationship because you're going to find that, you know, it's maybe not the first person you talk to. That's you may think they might make a good mentor, but you got to decide. Okay, is there that basic connection? Is there that that level yeah. of trust that exists? Because you know, trying to find somebody that's not necessarily you, right? That's, you know, hey, they look the world the same way I do. Yeah, you, know, you want somebody that's going to be more challenging than that as a mentor, but that you see some alignment. Yeah, I think that's a good point also, Andy. You want somebody that there's enough connection and chemistry that you get along and that you, you've got enough sort of shared experiences and you've got to enjoy the interaction and the time together. And yet the person shouldn't be one who is so comfortable that you aren't going to be, uh, they need to challenge you also. So be willing to challenge and you also be in a position and receptive to hear what they have to say. Um, But what you don't need is somebody that you're not learning anything from or they're not challenging you or making you think of things that you hadn't already thought of. Yeah. Well, I think one of the key things for people, when you start thinking about the next step, regardless of, regardless of the position that you're in, but I think it's really important starting as an SDR and so on, is, is you have to start developing a point of view. You know, what, what do you stand for? What's your, what's your philosophy about sales? Even though you could be you know, six months into your career, Take what you've learned so far. What's what's it adding up to mean for you? And be very conscious and deliberate about formulating what this philosophy is and and who you are. And you know, the earlier you do that, you know, as you start adding learning on top of that, you keep an open mind, 
but you at least understand you know what what the what the influences are and too often i see people just sort of you know going down the path i just show up at work every day i do what i'm supposed to do i do these things but they really haven't connected it to them right to themselves and i think that to me that's really a, a first step I mean, before you even think about okay do i want to take the next step is understand what you stand for because that that will start telling you is what the next step should be. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a I, I can't imagine, Andy, that many people are as deliberate around that as I think would be beneficial. And and it's probably something good just to take stock of on a regular basis. Just what do I because our 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 beliefs and our point of view will change, should change. So I think as our point of view changes, it's just good to ask ourselves the questions and to think about it. And I I don't think that's something that people do regularly. And I I love it. And I like to see reps that have a point of view. And I just love that as a question and an exercise. And this is where a mentoring relationship can be really helpful is somebody that's going to challenge challenge what you think and how you think and why you think it. And it, it forces one to think about it. Um, and, and to, to standardize isn't the right word, but really to get it crystallized in your own mind, what mm-hmm. it is that you do stand for and what is your point of view and what are your, your thoughts on something? I had a great conversation with one of our co-founders today and Someone from the outside may have looked and thought we were arguing. And e- even after the discussion, I had said, gosh, it's so great to just be able to have this discussion where you push back on my ideas, my point of view, what I'm thinking. And then I will also go and challenge his point of view and ways of thinking. And when you, when you, have that as a practice, it's very, very helpful because for me, and I think also for somebody contemplating what they want to do next, just that back and forth helps to to crystallize and make it clearer. It does. And I, and I think one of the things that's, that's really important about this is, uh, especially in, let's say, the Valley and in tech industry where you know, the bright, shiny object is always out there dangling. You know, there's a new startup where it could be the hot new thing. You know, we see salespeople sort of rushing from one company to the next and so on. Is, you know, if you have that point of view, if you understand what you really stand for, what your philosophy is, then it helps you to make a better decision about maybe you're not tempted by the next thing just because it's a bright, shiny object. Because first thing you have to learn is there's always going to be the next new bright, shiny object. <laughs> and absolutely. And if you want to, Increase your odds of being at one that you can really help them hit it out of the ballpark is you got to find the one that's that's best aligned with what you can offer them and the value you have. And you can't really do that if you not, haven't really sat and thought about what that is. Yeah, that's true. If you That's right. If you don't know what it is that you stand for and what you want, where you're going, it's hard for you to peg where you should be. And so then it makes it hard for somebody else to help you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right, right. Because they'll, they'll ask you that question. So if you think about it from the perspective of an S, you know, these various next stages, right? For So for an SDR, it could be, you're thinking about, okay, how do I become an AE? Or how do I become a CSM? An account manager. Or if you're an AE, you know, how do you prepare yourself to, that's it, take on more complex deals, you know, work on the enterprise side or the large enterprise side of thing versus the small enterprise deals you're doing now or the more transactional deals you're doing now or or if, you know, you think maybe your future lies in management and you're an aide, you know, how do you how do you prep yourself to become a manager? Well, again, so let's I I think with any of them it's how do you do this how do you do this gap analysis? How do you do a gap analysis of where you are and where you want to be? And then how do you go and attain those skills? So sometimes, I mean, I have, I, I typically like to initiate this conversation with God, SDRs, the sales reps who work for me, whomever. I do want to understand where they're going. 
so that I can help them get wherever it is they want to be. That's important to me. Now, I didn't always have the benefit of that. And I'm sure, you know, different managers are different. They bring different things to the table. So not every not every rep who's listening to this is going to have, let's say, a manager or a mentor. And they are going to have to take things into their own hands. And I think initiating a, ver- a very direct conversation, number one, with 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 your manager, your boss first is, if nothing else, a great place to start. And there was a, a, a rep who used to work for me um, who was asking this very question. He and I had lunch earlier in the week and he was, he said, I don't really know how they think I'm doing. Like we're, the, the company's new and we're going through all these changes and I don't really, I I don't know as we're, as we're growing, if they have identified me as somebody to go take that position of more responsibility. And I said, well, have you asked them? Have you asked anyone for feedback? And he, he said, no, I, gosh, it's so obvious and yet hadn't done it. And so we spent some time talking about ask, how do you ask for feedback and, and who and how specific and when, but I think the first is just asking for feedback and going to a manager is a really good place to start. Yeah. Nothing, nothing sort of beats that. And it may be in some cases people are afraid to do it because quite honestly, they don't really get along with their manager. They don't respect their manager and so on. Almost that almost doesn't matter, right? I mean, that it is a point of view. It is the person that's, that's closest to you in terms of looking at your day-to-day performance. I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, similar situations where I just did not get along with my immediate supervisor, but they also ended up being allies, you know, as I was wanting to take that next step. I mean, it, it, you have to sort of get past that. You know, there could be some just personal things that just are irreconcilable, right. but, but by and large, yeah, not all of your managers are going to be your friends, right? So, so you just have to get past that that part of it, and um, yeah, as you said, ask them the question: How are they doing? And then maybe take it up one level too, because sometimes, yeah, you know, especially in the size of the organization, it's not huge. You know, it's not just your immediate supervisor, but the next line manager is probably going to have their own opinions and some fairly good insights into what you're doing or need to do or what they perceive you could be doing better. And, and peers, having your peers give you feedback is also really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And I think that that's, as you said, one of those could be your mentor even, you know, there are peers that maybe have a little more seniority and, and so on. I mean, one of the key things that, that I think is really important, and this is, (coughs) excuse me, this is going to sound perhaps funny to, to people that listen to us (laughs) oftentimes talk about, um, you know, books and reading and so on. But absolutely the best thing somebody can do in addition to having a mentor relationship is to start reading more. And not just, you know, articles online, but books. And and not necessarily books about sales. I mean, that's great. But, you know, books about business. You know, how do you develop your business acumen? You know, so what should you be reading? How do you... How do you, you know, learn what other people have done in similar situations? So reading, you know, biographies, not necessarily just business biographies, but, you know, biographies of leaders and people who you've admired, um, you know, just generally broaden your worldview, I think is one of the most important things people can do to progress in their career because to progress in your career typically means that you're going to take on responsibilities, whether they're management or just additional sales responsibilities. I said maybe working with large, more complex deals where you're dealing with a greater number of stakeholders at higher levels within an organization. It requires more of you. It requires a broader perspective on the world and on life and people. And you get some of that through experience, but you also need to expose yourself through it through what you read. Yeah, I I so agree that just broadening your perspective is 
really important. And as you and I've talked about, I'm a huge reader also. Like I love to read. I love books. I love that medium. Not everybody does. That's not everybody's medium. So I think broadening your perspective in the various ways that you can do it, whether it's podcasts and on a variety of topics, um, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's books, maybe it's long form articles. There are great sites that have long form articles on them. Maybe it's videos. It's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I think the, the main point is to be doing it. And, and it's not just sales. It's not just how to be a net better SDR. It's not crushing your number. But well, it's also these other these other topics that are going to ha- help you to think about things differently. Yeah, and one of the listeners of, of our podcast uh, sent me an email today with an, a link to an article because he had heard us talk about reading and reading more broadly. And as mm-hmm. I've mentioned on several occasions, yeah, I think that one of the most important things <laughs> people could read uh, to improve themselves is to read Shakespeare. Mm. And he had sent a link to an article that he had read with a CIO of a, uh, one of the major financial services firms saying that, yeah, well, you know, when they're looking for for you know people with certain attributes, uh, like understanding investors and understanding human behavior and motivations, you know, they want people to have read Shakespeare because you know, it was one of the the things that was most illuminating about Shakespeare, in fact, some you know critics think that that much of how we act, our human nature, as we define it in sort of the Western sense, was actually defined by Shakespeare, right? That mm. it didn't exist till he really wrote about it. So, yeah, that's just one example, and not saying you should go through the entire <laughs> catalog of Shakespeare plays and but and sonnets, but yeah, you you do learn a lot when you go through that, and you know, read one of the books that you know maybe has a critical companion. So it's you know helping you interpret and so on, um, but it becomes broadening, and I just thought that was great to to get that. From yeah, our, that's one of our I, I love that. I love that. Love that. That's fantastic. And, and I think another thing that that is really important too is look for opinions that are almost diametrically opposed to yours and read there as well. I mean, if you're you know, give sort of I know a current, a current example if. You know, if you're I know where you're all, going. If you get all your news from Fox, I know where you're going. I then, knew you were going there. Then you need to read Huff Post as well. And similarly, if you get all your news from Huffington Post, go read some stuff on Fox or Breitbart or somewhere. Learn both sides because it's really important to understand what everybody is thinking in the world. You know, it's not just if you just think, "Hey, I only want to read this," you know, two people about sales because yeah, I really agree with what they say. Yeah, go find somebody else you don't agree with. And let's let's hear what they have to say. That's so hard to do. I mean, I will admit right now, when you're just talking about business and broad and getting a different perspective, I'm in. When you start talking about politics, then I find that I have a more visceral reaction. <laughs> and it, and actually, that's that's the whole point of it, though. Well, but that it is the point. I think it, it is me, the whole point. Right. Yeah. So, a perfect example is, you know, the New York Times has hired some, you know, conservative columnists, and over the last couple of years, and recently they hired this gentleman, Brett Stevens, from the Wall Street Journal, who, you know, certainly made a name for himself during the the campaign for taking on Trump, but he's a conservative, and. <laughs> he writes this weekly column, and it's amazing how it just infuriates some of the readers of the New York Times that, yeah, you know, that he's writing, <laughs> he's writing his you know conservative opinion piece, and he's not inflammatory like you know some far right wing, but I mean, sort of solid, sort of middle of the road conservative, if you will, and. There are people, every time he writes a column, people write, well, I'm canceling my subscription to the New York Times. Mm. That's like, really? Have, have we gotten to the point where we're so afraid of, of hearing opposing, opposing point of views? How are we ever going to learn if we don't consider somebody else's opinion besides our own? And so uh, I, think, I think this really becomes important when you think about sales because if you develop a philosophy and a point of view, what it means is that somebody else has an opposing point of view. That's right. And so you need to understand what that opposing point of view is. It doesn't mean you necessarily need to agree with it, 
buy into it, but you need to know what it is and you need to be open to learning about it because, you know, there is no one right choice in sales, right? I mean, if you think there's only one way to do it, then, hey, you're going to be disappointed at some point in your career because you're going to run into prospects that, that uh, don't identify with that. Yeah, and I would say it's, we all have a bias to be attracted to those opinions which most closely match our own. And so it's hard. I think it's, I I agree with you 100%. I also acknowledge that it's really difficult. Sure. It's a challenge we're we're putting out there for people is, is, yeah, I think we're all guilty by and large. If I were to look at my own my own reading across the spectrum, not just, you know, political consumption, but, you know, other things that I read that, that, yeah, they probably, you know, tend to adhere largely to certain points of view, but, but I do consciously make an effort to, to read the other side as well, because it's not, yeah, I'm just never convinced that I know everything. You're not? <laughs> surprisingly, right? You may listen <laughs> I know, to it's this surprising. Think, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I feel that I feel the same way. Sometimes I do have a harder time. I I naturally gravitate towards the sources I know that I'm familiar with that agree with me, that are comfortable. So I have to be very deliberate about seeking out those other seeking out those other voices because you're right. We don't know everything. And I, and I do want, I'm also curious and I value curiosity. So I think about people just sort of back to who do you, people that are looking to get promoted or get, go to the next level. I think I know one thing that I look for and I do hear it from, from my peers as well is people who are curious, people who are open-minded, people who, do have broader perspectives. So all of these things that we're encouraging definitely put you on that path um, that you want to be on if you're looking to continue to uh, progress. Yeah. I mean, if people's people's perception of you are, are really important as you're moving forward in your career, and it's not like you're trying to you know, consciously manage those perceptions. What you want to do is consciously manage what you know, what you're interested in, what you talk about, how you talk about it. And the perception part will take care of itself. That is very true. Wow. Okay. So way, profound. So profound. So profound. Yeah, we got very philosophical here today. I know. Well, and that, that was all. It's funny, Andy, how we went philo- philosophical on a topic of how do you progress in your career? How do you identify the gaps and then fill them. But I actually think the, the, the discussion is, is a good one. It may not be one that people think of naturally, but I think just this idea of having broader perspectives and always trying to find out what you don't know, um, learning to see things a different way. I think those are all really, really helpful, um, just to make you more prepared for whatever it is that next challenge is that you are interested in taking. Well, and as one of my recent guests on the show, Lolly Daskal, who had written this book called The Leadership Gap, talked about it. And, and as I've written before and talked about, is I believe sales leadership starts with the individual contributor. And yeah, the, she talks about this leadership gap, just as you had talked about, is, is people become satisfied and stop learning. And so this gap develops mm-hmm. between what they think they know and what they should know. Huh. And huh. that's a bad place to be. So you always want to be assessing yourself. And it doesn't mean you do it daily, but consciously you should think about it once a quarter at least, if not more frequently, is, is okay, what, where am I in my job? Where am I with my customers? What could I be doing better? What, where am I strong? Where am I deficient? And how do I you know, enhance my strengths and cure my deficiencies? Yeah, the, you mentioned that book before. It's, it's on my to-read list. It's a good book. And yeah. yeah, even though it's somewhat designed for senior managers, it certainly is not something that only senior managers should, lead, should read because it, it, she structures in such a way that you can, these seven different archetypes, uh, that you can you know, find yourself 
in multiple of these sort of Jungian, you know, based on Carl Jung, um, Jungian archetypes, you can find yourself in multiple of those. And it's, it's a good, a good guide to sort of say, okay, okay, this is, this is who I am. Sort of, this is how I react in certain situations. Yeah. This, this are things I should really be focusing on learning. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it sounds like a good, it sounds like a good read. Speaking of reading and expanding our horizons. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, of our popular episodes are our book club uh, episodes and we'll, those are be, my favorite and we'll be having, <laughs> we'll be having some of those again soon. So Bridget, we've reached the end of the road here for today. Um, as always, a pleasure to have you on the show. As always, and until next Friday. Until next Friday. Friends, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you spending this time with us, and we'll look forward to speaking with you then. Sounds great. Have a good one. Bye.